Where'd you hear that? The internet. And you believed it? Yeah. They can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. Where'd you hear that? The, the internet. internet. Oh, look. Here comes my date. I met him on the internet. He's a French model. Uh, bonjour. All right, and today's episode of Breaking the Internet. Typically, when memes go around, people share them without really thinking about them. This is sort of a common thing, and this particular meme is really no different, because it does not stand up to even the slightest amount of intellectual scrutiny. So here we go, and I know that this is just... It's gone viral. That doesn't mean that it's right, and always keep that in mind with anything that we're doing with breaking the internet. So this was one that was being circulated earlier on Facebook. So you'll see the pictures there in the bottom. It's It stores after the COVID-19 virus and people have started to clear them out. And the commentary here is, late stage capitalism put under even the slightest stress looks exactly like what capitalism claim socialism looks like. All right, so there's a couple of things right off the bat that I want to bring up about this one. First of all, three things are factually incorrect because there's a few other things that are incorrect. The spirit of the meme is headed in the wrong direction, but there's three things in that very short meme that are factually incorrect. Number one, there's no such thing as late-stage capitalism. You see, the idea that there is such a thing as late-stage capitalism is an idea that springs forth from people that are already convinced that socialism is the correct path. They believe that socialism is a progression after capitalism. That was an idea that was espoused by Karl Marx. Now, the reason that that is untrue is because capitalism does not have stages. It is an economic policy. So the late-stage capitalism idea is a made-up term that can't even be properly defined, and considering the fact that only one country has even had something pretty darn close to capitalism for a while, even though we don't really have as much of it now as we did at one time, is America, there would be no observable way to compare it to other capitalist countries because there really aren't any others that are as, even close to as market-driven as the United States, and so that would be a term that is impossible to define, kind of like assault weapon. And what liberals usually mean by that when they say late-stage capitalism, what they mean by that is crony capitalism. What they mean by that is a capitalism that has become something where government is delving out things like bailouts and money and favoritism and favorable regulations to corporations, and corporations are in turn helping write laws and determine what laws are going to be. But that is not capitalism. Again, capitalism is an economic idea, an economic philosophy, not necessarily a political one. The two are connected, but they are not the same thing. And second of all, by definition, crony capitalism would not be capitalism. Because the very fact that you would have government intervening and trying to pick winners and losers and trying to bolster some companies or harm some other companies, that, by definition, is not capitalism. That is cronyism, which is a completely different thing. And the mere existence of that makes the system that we have right now not a free market. There are other things we are doing that are also not free market. But the presence of that alone would disqualify what you're talking about as being any kind of capitalism. Now, the second thing that they get wrong in this, in its purest form, a free market would have increased demand for the products that they're talking about, toilet tissue, that kind of thing. And then there would have been a price increase. What would have happened once the prices increased? Well, once that price increased, less people would be buying it in large quantities, which would have balanced out the demand curve. So in other words, the irony in all of this is that those store shelves were bare because there was a lack of capitalism. Because once that demand shot up, what should have happened by the retailer is they said, oh, looks like people are buying an awful lot of this stuff. We might be able to make some money if we increase the prices on it. So if you had a 48-pack of toilet paper that cost $90, I mean, as ridiculous as that sounds, if they had seen that on the store shelves, people would have at best bought one. 
I don't even know if they would have paid that much for it, maybe closer to $50. But anyway, it's just an imaginary number I'm using to make my point. I'm, I'm not using a real number here on the demand curve. But if that had happened, all of a sudden your demand would have dropped because prices would have increased. And so because of that, and the same thing happens with essentials when it comes to a natural disaster or whatever, people freak out and say, oh, you're price gouging. But if that price goes up, which is what capitalism would suggest should happen, then people wouldn't be hoarding and you would see a much lower rate of demand. That's what you would have seen happen. And so the irony is the scenario that they're talking about that is the result of capitalism actually happened because there was not enough capitalism and the rules for a free market were not adhered to. And then finally, the third thing that they get wrong is they said under just the slightest stress. Well, by anybody's rubric or measure, this is not slight stress. This is extreme stress. Something like this, the closest thing that we have to even compare this to is an outbreak of Spanish influenza, which has been about a hundred years ago. More than a hundred years ago, actually. And so the idea that this is the slightest stress or this is something that happens all the time is simply not true. This is major stress. This is intense stress. Which, by the way, plays along to a part that I'm going to talk about where they're wrong in the spirit of what they're saying. But just on a factual basis, you could not make the case that what is happening right now in this country or around the world is a slight stress. This thing is an extreme, rare circumstance. Now, more importantly in all of this, it mostly comes from a worldview of somebody that already thinks the government is going to solve their problems. This is where they're wrong in the spirit of what they're talking about. We've already talked about how they're factually incorrect. This is where they go wrong in the understanding the overall worldview of where they're coming from, because the thing is, capitalism never claims to solve every single one of the world's problems. Capitalism does not make you immune to things like an act of God. It does not make you immune to pandemics or natural disasters, any of those things. It never claims to do that. All it does is say that it allocates resources the most efficient way possible. Now, sometimes the most efficient way possible is not great, but it's the best that you can do considering the circumstances there. See, that's the difference in socialism and capitalism. Socialism claims to account for those things and make a system that is perfect and never has any problems regardless of what's going on in the world. Capitalism doesn't. Capitalism never claims that. And so when you're dealing with something that absolutely cleans out store shelves, that happens, what, maybe once every four to ten years? I mean, four years is being extremely generous and saying this is something that is an incredibly rare event, but we do have shortages of things occasionally for things like a hurricane coming up. I remember I couldn't get distilled water for a couple of weeks when one of the hurricanes hit down in Florida, and that was fine. Those people needed it more than I did, and that was okay. But my point in all that is, which, by the way, is another example of resources being allocated correctly to where they were most needed. But anyway, what I'm saying that is, this is somebody that doesn't understand because you're having a real problem within the quasi-capitalist system that we have now. This happening maybe once every four, seven, ten years. But under socialism, that's what it looks like all the time. That's the difference. Under capitalism, we restock. Under socialism, the shelves just stay bare constantly. There's a reason people in Venezuela are literally hunting down dogs in the streets just to be able to cook them to have something to eat. And the reason that the average person has lost over 30 pounds there. See, that's the difference here. Is in capitalism, this is a temporary event that is caused by unforeseen circumstances that the market will eventually absorb and correct. In socialism, that never happens. They stay at a constant rate where commodities are not available to people, and that's the big difference. So you see, socialism's goal, and its stated goal, is to install this kind of permanent utopia, whereas capitalism just adjusts to new problems. 
That's the big difference in socialism and capitalism is that socialism never adjusts to correct anything, and every th adjustment that must be made has to be made by bureaucrats at the top, and that response tends to be significantly slower than if people just vote with their dollars and correct mistakes or correct problems that occur because of different situations on their own. It's kind of like, if you were to put it into an analogy, capitalism is like an off-road vehicle, and socialism is like a sedan. Now, it may be a sedan that doesn't work about 80% of the time because it's constantly breaking down. We see that in socialist nations like Cuba, where they you know, don't have the ability to make newer things like that. But anyway, um, when it comes to this, think of capitalism as sort of an off-road vehicle, like a Jeep or a truck that has shock absorbers and all that. It can handle rough terrain. A sedan, it works pretty good on the road, but really if any obstacle bigger than a speed bump comes its way, it can't handle it. It starts breaking to pieces because the thing doesn't adjust well. An off-road vehicle, that ride's going to be bumpy. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to like it. You're going to definitely notice if you're going over some really big hills or some really big dunes. But the point is you're going to be able to get through it. A sedan can't. It just stalls out. That's really the big difference between socialism and capitalism. You see, capitalism isn't supposed to solve all of the world's problems. It's supposed to allow people to use their dollars to allocate resources more efficiently and make them go where they want them to go. And in that way, it does it far better than socialism. <laughs> My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.